days last year. There's a big reason that we have Fellowship Day because, again, this is a player-driven event. And without players, with leadership, support of our team chaplain, Jeff Forge, but players that put it, put this, make this possible, encourage one another, uh, not only in their baseball careers, but in their life. Jeremy is a, Jeremy Affeld is a discipler of men in that clubhouse. And I know he's a discipler in his own home. And I am thankful that he is a San Francisco Giant. I'm thankful that he has helped make yet another Fellowship Day possible. Jeremy Affeld. I'm sorry, I don't do well speaking and sitting down. So I tend to bore myself when I sit down and talk. But uh, I just, man, again, I want to thank you guys for coming. You know, three years ago when I joined up on this, this many people did not come. Uh, to Faith Day. So I really appreciate you guys coming out and hearing our hearts. But I do want to tell you, man, I, it, is, it, is so, it is such an honor to hear these guys uh, speak to you today. I, one of my, it's just an amazing deal to sit in the clubhouse and to hang with these, with these men, man. And they challenge each other. I'll tell you, we're underneath because supposedly the bullpens were supposed to be that way, but we don't have a bullpen, so we got to go under there and sit in, in our little cubicle and stay out of the way. <laughs> and, uh, and, and we got some interesting talks going on down there. And these guys, man, they, they got some awesome theological debates. Uh, unfortunately, I cheated in high school in Spanish class the entire time, so I have no idea what they're saying. <laughs> and I remember taking Spanish class, I'm like, why am I going to take this? this is, what am I going to use this for? Well, I mean... Now I know, because I don't get to really participate, and all I hear is the osis and na 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 na, and I'm like, ah, I don't get it. <laughs> so I try, to, I try to hang in there as much as possible. Man, I love each and every one of these guys, man, in their hearts, and you see Jesus on them, man. When they compete, you see Jesus on them in the clubhouse, and I really appreciate you, man, man. I appreciate everything you've done. Belter, man, you're awesome, dude. So, appreciate that. I don't want to keep people here, I get wordy, obviously. Uh, and I want to give Jeremy some opportunity to sing. Uh, I, I want to not be controversial. If you read my blogs, I can be controversial, so I'm going to try to keep that from happening. I don't want you guys cooing me walking out of here. So uh, I, want to keep, I want to tell you a little bit about me and where I came from. I, yeah, I grew up in a military family. I bounced all over the world. I also grew up in a church home. So I was the same as Volga song. I went to church my entire life. I went to church on... Wednesday, twice on Sunday, maybe through in a couple Fridays and Saturdays just for good measure. And uh, Sunday school twice, if I was bad. And uh, I doubled up, you know. And so, you know, I kind of had those opportunities where I was just inundated with Jesus, God, you know, worship, music, all this kind of stuff. And, I, and, I, and so I just, you know, I accepted Christ at five just because it was the thing to do, you know. I was like, ah, okay, I'll say it. I have no idea what I'm saying. You know, and then at 12, I saw this uh, movie on, on the end times, and it literally scared the hell right out of me. I, I mean, I was like, I'm re-upping. <laughs> this guillotine thing's coming down, and I'm freaking out. You know, people are, like, leaving cars and stuff and, like, disappearing. So I'm making sure I'm in, you know. So, so I was like, yeah, fire insurance policy, you know. And so, uh, so I re-upped, you know, at 12. And then, uh, you know, at 16, I was kicked, I was almost kicked out my basketball team because I didn't have a good attitude, and you know my my there's a beautiful woman in, in, in high school that I that I was you know at first she didn't really like me she stood up in class one day and said she'd never marry a guy like me because of my attitude, and I looked at her and I said challenge taken she's now been married to me for 12 years. <laughs> beautiful boys man and uh, she stuck by me so I had to have an attitude change uh, and so I, I at 16 I, I did I had a new a new relationship with Jesus Christ uh, and at first it was to stay on the basketball team but it, it was actually an opportunity for me to change my attitude and understand what Jesus really meant to me uh, and I, I signed out of high school uh, when I was 17 got the kid I went by the Kansas City Royals and when they signed me I was like who I, I, I I don't really know Bo Jackson, maybe. I was kind of hoping for the Giants, but I guess Saves and Bobby didn't really like me that much, you know, at high school. But, uh, you know, I, I kind of, so I signed, and I can remember the struggles, because I, I was a 17, 18-year-old kid and never failed ever at, at baseball. It was always good at it. And I got to the minor leagues, and I got my butt kicked, man. It was like I wasn't that good. And, 
I didn't understand how to fail and I was frustrated and I was like, but I thought I was on top of the world and now I'm like questioning if God's even relevant. Are you there? Are you seeing me struggle? Are you seeing my frustrations? Where are you at? You know, I felt like, you know, now I look back, I actually felt like David, man. I'm like, hey, are you up there? Because my life stinks, you know, and, and, I, and I don't understand what's going on, and, I, and I'm failing every every turn, and every pitch I throw, I mean, I'm failing. I still have the record in high A for the most losses, 16. That's almost impossible to do in A-ball, man. I, I got it, you know. And I gave up 15 hits in five innings. I mean, that's really bad. So, I mean, the balls just can't bounce their way that many times. Well, it did to me. So, I was frustrated, and at the All-Star break in Wilmington, I was sitting there. And I remember opening up, I, I was by myself, and I didn't really, I was not enjoying my season. And I opened up, to, I opened up a passage in the Bible, and it says, you know, you, you plan your journey, but he orders your steps. And I think, well, I took, I, I accepted, you know, I could have not played professional baseball. I could have said no and went to college, but I didn't. I, I chose my route. But then it says, he orders your steps. That means, he, and ultimately, he takes good care of you. He understands what you need. He understands the way you need to go. And I sat there and I'm like, are these seriously the steps that you're asking me to take? This is not good for me. And then I flipped a couple pages and I, I got this little sticker in my Bible that somebody gave me in the off season. And it's a sticker of a tandem bicycle. You know what a tandem bicycle is? Right, two sets of, two, 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 two seats, two sets of pedals, one driver, right? And I got one question asked of me by God. And he said, where are you at on the bike? And I was like, uh, what do you mean? Well, where are you at? Because I want to know if you're on the back pedaling as hard as you possibly can because I'm supposed to be on the front steering you. Amen. You just get on the back and pedal and you work hard and you give everything to me. And I will take good care of you because my way is better than your way, whether you are going to like it or not. That's right. My way is so much better if you'll just listen. And I was so loud in my complaining. I was whining. I was talking about how bad my life is. But I was healthy, I had a beautiful wife. I mean, it was amazing. And I look back, I had, a, I had a good life. And I just sat there and I said, fine. And I got on, I said, I'll get on the back. And I started pedaling. I worked really, really hard. I went to the field every day and just, you know, tried to accelerate at my skills. I went home, I read books on marriage to accelerate as a husband so I could be the best husband I could be to my, to my family, to my wife. And I, and, I, and I tried really hard and I found myself two years later at the major league level at 22 years of age. And I'm going to tell you, I went, through, and I went through some more pain. I went through three teams that lost 100 games every year. I spent more time on the DL than I did on the pitcher's mound. And it was frustrating. I spent time on the DL for a blister, and they, glad, and they actually classified it as a broken fingernail. Do you understand the situation? <laughs> <laughs> Not good. Okay, so I was kind of annoyed by that. But I, I, I felt just I had some serious issues. Like, I'm like, and now I'm frustrated again. And then I can remember that tandem bicycle, and I can remember I went to a, a place called in Kansas City called the International House of Prayer, and I can remember walking into this prayer room, it's 24-7, these people worship and pray 20, it does not stop. You will walk in at 3 a.m. and there are people worshiping God, praying to God, yearning for God. And I remember walking in there one day and just sitting down and just letting tears run down my face and say, why? Am I not enjoying my life? I'm at the major league level. And I can remember how awesome my God is. And he says, because you're not letting me drive. And I've taken such good care of you. And I love you and I love you well. I sent my son to literally hang on a cross and let the blood run down his body. He got beat and whipped. I let him die for you because I love you and I want what's best for you. Do you think that I don't take care of the birds of the air, these birds flying around? They're eating french fries and people are laying on the ground. He's taking care of them. <laughs> they eat garlic fries. <laughs> and if he's going to do that, these birds are trying to find food and they just fly over the stadium. They got all the food they want. They got a buffet of garlic fries out there. Man. They're crushing. You not think he's going to give you something to eat? He says, I take care of all the birds in the air, the fish in the sea. I let the dew come onto the flowers and the grass at night to renew its strength. Do you not think that I'm going to take care of you? And I can remember sitting there smiling and feeling the warmth of God and saying, oh, I love you so well, Jeremy. Let me drive. And I can remember yearning to get out of Kansas City. Please, God, 
please. <laughs> and I got traded to Colorado, and I'm like, great, you traded me to the moon, is this a joke? <laughs> I'm like, way, you know, and I remember my teammate coming up to me and be like, hey, good luck, keep it down. <laughs> First hit our face, threw a curveball, Homer, and I'll hear, welcome to Colorado from the stands, you know, so it wasn't a great deal, but I get to re meet Ramon for the first time. I didn't know much about him at the time. A year later, I was in the World Series, losing, getting spanked by Boston Red Sox, four games of nothing. And then I signed with Cincinnati for whatever reason, I don't know, I just said, God, I trust you. I started just riding my bike. I said, I, I'm just gonna pedal. And then I get to come here, and I win a world championship. And so he's taken me through these steps of pain, perplexity, but he's promoted me through this pain and this frustration. I mean, I had pains, and it's, I understand it's relevant. I understand there's a lot of people out there saying, oh, you're paying great, big deal, you had a bad year in the big leagues. I get it. I do get it, it's relative. But my God is also relative to you. And in your pain and in your perplexity, he will bring promotion. He did it to Job. And he loves you and he loves you so well. And in my frustration in life, I remember just feeling the love of God come over me. And he says, Jeremy, there's nothing that you can do that will separate my love from you. Search for me with all of your heart. You're going to fail. You are going to fail, but I will not leave you. Some people don't feel worthy. He does not leave you. I remember, I remember one of my favorite stories is a prostitute getting thrown before Jesus by a bunch of Pharisees. And he says, this woman's been caught in the act of adultery. What are we going to do? Jesus started writing in the sand. I'm not even going to try to tell you what he said because I don't know when he wrote in the sand. But I know everybody started leaving because he said, he who is without sin, throw the first stone. And they left. And Jesus looked at this woman and said, where are your accusers? She says, they're not here. And says, neither do I accuse you. Quit sinning. But I love you and I forgive you and change. He's the only man that can accuse and he never did. That's my God. I fail, he loves me. I mess up, he forgives me. Amen. I love that cross. The guy for me that one day he will come back and take me home like the said and put me in a mansion and love on me, and I feel the warmth of that love. I want to encourage you guys today. My favorite, one of my other favorite stories in the Bible is when Mary and Martha are preparing a dinner, and Martha's good doing all the work, and she's getting upset at Mary because she's sitting at Jesus' feet, just hanging out. And Martha looks at Jesus and says, why aren't you getting angry? Do you not see I'm doing all these things for you? And Jesus says, yeah, but Mary's doing the only thing that matters. And she's sitting at my feet, knowing her pain, knowing your frustration, knowing your failures, and yet where she feels free is in the presence of me. And if you guys are tied up, if you guys are frustrated, I encourage you to do one thing. Get on the back of the bike, quit trying to steer your life because it's not going to work. Do trust the Almighty God, the uncreated one that created every one of you and everything out here. He knows all. He sees all. He loves all. He sent a son to die for all. And he loves you and loves you well. And if you want to feel freedom, get before the living God and just sit there before him and just feel the power and the presence and the warmth of the almighty smile of the almighty God. And you will feel good and you will be free. Because there are people out here today that are not free. But you can be free. And you can take your pain and perplexity like Ramon did when he was told he had no shot working in Coca-Cola, a factory, to provide for his family. He said he wasn't going to make it. He made it. You might see angels like Cassia did. It says, you're going to be great because everybody was made for greatness, and these angels told him that. You're going to see Brandon Belt. You're going to have situations where it doesn't go your way, but it doesn't go your way because he has another way that's better. He got hurt one way, so he become a major leaguer the other. That's our God. He makes all things work together for the good of those who love him. And I encourage you to love him.